Thank you very much that you came to our session. And today we are talking about strategies of uh, successful uh, senior uh, old age. My name is Tatiana Drozdova. I'll be your, the moderator. I'm a co-founder and head of the team Young Old, the team who devel is developing uh, education, infrastructure and services for seniors. And I'd like to present our um, speakers, introduce them. Sevalet Rozanov, a professor of chair of health psychology and deviant behavior in St. Petersburg State University. Tatiana Kozlova, doctor of social sciences, professor, expert of high school of economics on uh, social and demographic issues. Uh, Maria Trajan, architect, um, founder of lab of architectural solutions for seniors, teacher of the chair of architecture of um, um, residential buildings. So one of the topics today, so our discussion is called the age of survival. It sounds terrible and though uh, I, I, I can see it in this document but uh, I want to hear it as seldom as possible and the image of the senior person is changing a lot. There is this uh, phenomenon as a liberalization of aging when seniors are looking for new identity, uh, new role in society, maybe more active, uh, maybe freer from stereotypes. But I'd like to tell you two stories that I uh, heard. So to move, shift us a little bit from this uh, uh, ideal world to the reality. I worked in an organization where there were quite a lot of employees of older age and at some point they invited some young employees uh, for leader positions, for managers, for being the uh, heads of these people and it was a big problem. I saw uh, how hard it was to find some common platform for common work, for communication to work together, to go, f to move forward and to build this organization. And I also noticed that uh, younger uh, employees they, and younger uh, managers, they look at senior employees uh, like uh, just some dead weight, something that uh, impedes them from moving forward. And the second story is about my family. I, uh, w when my grandma was old, she uh, came to a doctor with some complaints and the doctor told her in response what do you want that's your it's proper to your age it's what sh it's supposed to be and after that it's not like he refused her to pro uh, to, gi to give her care but uh, he didn't inform her on possibilities on options that could have helped her with her issue and it really uh, reflected significantly on all her life and on the life of our whole family. And I think it's a very good illustration, a very good example of what kind of stereotypes exist about older people and uh, what kind of issues. So there is discrimination even in healthcare that people can face. It's called ageism. Uh, age discrimination when it's a negative attitude towards people of um, older age and though there are still these uh, conservative um, ideas and such challenges uh, seniors have still there are quite a lot of uh, studies developments uh, our life is moving forward people live longer there are more people of uh, older age in the society and there are new concepts for instance, like the, street, um, the concept of successful strategy uh, for seniors. And today we will discuss what kind of strategies uh, can they be uh, with different professionals, how the image of um, senior uh, ch change and what can we do to implement such strategies. And I'd like to give the floor to Vsevolod Razanov, Vsevolod, Dr of medicine and he studies the questions of efficiency of the teaching people of elder age. Thank you very much. 
good afternoon, dear well, uh, listeners, dear friends, dear colleagues. Uh, I, I was uh, I'll be the first to develop uh, the uh, ideas and thoughts of that our moderator uh, uh, stated. So, what happened during these last three, three days uh, have some relation to the issue we are discussing here right now. So, we all understand that today a person who is six year old has a, an opportunity and a good prospect uh, to live uh, like the whole life because 150 years ago 35 years it was the end so uh, you give you give birth to your children and then you almost died either in t at war or, or some diseases now it's changed a lot and the society uh, is lagging behind through all, um, all this with all this biological process. Now there is a lot of people over 60, over 65, maybe they are all retired, and it's a great opportunity, it tells us what. So it's medical progress, it's uh, um, proper diagnostics, it's a lot of advancements in surgery, when we saw that the diseases that were uh, like uh, that condemned you now they can be treated and now there is a big challenge for for the society because there are many many issues I can say that 80 percent it's like mostly psychological problems why because when we talk about medicine when we can replace one joint another joint put some new lenses in your eyes I don't know what else make larger all your blood vessels for some crucially important uh, organs like heart and brain and we can go on and on with this list it's great but behind all this we shouldn't forget about the person and this thing is really an important issue because when we have this uh, uh, flow of technologies that comes coming towards us sometimes we feel that these um, opportunities are limitless but we should understand they have their limits and then we should understand that today uh, this big amount of population 30 or even more percent of all the demographics we should uh, act, uh, make them more active we should engage them we should create conditions we should give them opportunities we should find some technologies so when I pre was preparing my talk, I had different ideas. So how it happens that I'm here? Some time ago we had a project where we had this area of um, teaching for teaching elderly people. So it's very trivial and clear and now it's used everywhere from what I understand in different towns and cities and it's we hear about it more and more but five years ago it sounded like something very innovative and unusual uh, can you imagine uh, so what kind of opportunities it give to seniors so they can become more economically active they can learn something new while they're retired they can improve their uh, cognitive level because we know that ongoing stress uh, and don't go in intellectual activity help us to maintain our cognitive balance so we thought that we can help these people and we understood that this educational system should be organized in a way to find some uh, very passionate excited young people that could be in, could become teachers for these seniors and when we started to ask uh, what should we teach them uh, because first of all we should teach these young people something for, for, for instance when you are over 60 it's easier to explain how you should talk to such a person how to organize such an educational process and we decided that it would be great to talk about that what we call this active aging or happy aging or positive aging this strategy is quite uh, well developed quite well worked out at any website if you 
in the, if you Google this, you will find a lot of uh, good recommendations for physical activity, then social activity, then you'll see intellectual activity, a mindful attitude towards your own health, regulation of your sleep, some balance in what you eat and how you organize your whole day. And of course, it's all true. And at all these sessions, you heard about all these issues. But behind all this, besides that, there, are, there is a very important issue. What should we change in the consciousness, in the mind? Because I said it's mostly a psychological issue. Because we have to change a lot and uh, for everyone. For people uh, who uh, help these seniors, so all the doctors and nurses, all the medical staff, the whole educational system, if it wants to do something for seniors. So this education for seniors, it's, uh, it's mostly what small groups and organizations are doing. And I was trying to promote the idea that it may be done by some large universities that are quite empty in the evenings that could be used to uh, this to extend their cap opportunities and it can be um, quite well funded because the government supports that. So what should we change psychologically? So in all this um, mind of all these people who would have given these opportunities and of course for seniors themselves we should change a lot of course because we should understand I, for instance, thought sh that I should say that uh, about for physical activity you should give more opportunities. And I see this booklet, and I see that a lot of uh, opportunities, at least in Moscow, maybe not everywhere, but at least in Moscow, there are already, already a lot of opportunities. But does everyone understand how it important it is for them? Does everyone understand the value? How many people still stay, uh, I mean seniors, outside of this uh, thinking, of this uh, um, field? But uh, it's important because uh, things of very high level that relates to um, objectives and um, meanings. When we think about what we are reading about healthy or active aging, active longevity, we see a lot of positive things, but if there are no sense or no meaning be behind it, then it all fall, it's all fallen apart. And here we can see a big issue because this meaning and the objective they are in the future, and seniors objectively they have this um, objective very, quite reduced, and we all understand that. So here this internal mechanism through which each person can find this uh, motivation for themselves, this objective to do this or that, w they should find it. But there is no easy answer here because you know that we heard many, many interesting things about some deep psychological things, for instance, the idea that everyone should take care of themselves, about their body, about their health, about their uh, thinking, about their mind. But we should not forget, they should not only think about, uh, take care about themselves, but also about others. And this part, when you are not only selfish in a way, but also altruistic about the whole society, when it beca will become, uh, when it will come into people's mind, then I think we'll get the results. It, uh, we will not see it soon, it's not easy to achieve. I don't have the recipe, what should we do for that? I can admit that. But I think the first thing that we can do, what we can start with, is to teach. To teach masses of people, lots of people, medical work, future doctors, uh, teachers of universities. And just representatives of population, just to give them knowledge more related to the incentives that can make them act. And uh, f first of all, this, one of these incentives is health, and then altruism. So the desire to main, uh, support not only yourself, but others as well. 
for instance, I like this um, uh, silver volunteers movement, sort of sports and seniors. Uh, it's not very numerous yet, but it's great, it's wonderful. All these forums are very important when people get together and they see that it's for many people. It make, makes an impression on others. So all these deep things should not be lost. Because when we hear about technologies, about futurism, futurology, it's wonderful. But it's better to be more realistic, uh, to, to be closer to your reality. And in spiritual and cognitive things, what's important for people, so to help them to get these values. That's all I wanted to say. Maybe there'll be some other ideas. Recently I read some study about the value of seniors. And uh, uh, interestingly, talking about altruism, that seniors in Russia often show much more altruistic uh, behavior than younger people. It's interesting that the seniors, according to this study, this altruism, this desire to, to contribute to society, to share your experience and your opinion and your resources that they already, of course, have. So it was not always impl implemented. So it was just in theory, not in practice. So there are some additional uh, efforts, some additional forms to make this altruistic wishes, this desire to participate in the society would be implemented uh, in full as much as this person wanted that to be. So I have a question. What are the strategies are the, uh, to find this um, sense and motivation for people? So it's clear that all this um, advice, uh, eat healthy, ex exercise. So if life is senseless, of course, it all stays just a list of some uh, wonderful pieces of advice and that's it. How can we look for this motivation? How, what can we do to make our life more useful? I guess I have to respond to this question since I started uh, this talk. You know, you can't induce it. The context has uh, to encourage you to do it. If the society is looking to the future, if uh, the rhetoric has changed, if we could change the wording itself, like elderly people or old men. And that's a big problem, you know, because they are archetypical things that are deeply rooted in our consciousness. So it's very difficult to make changes. Uh, but we have to start it. And then uh, people will uh, uh, have these meanings, you know. If you do it, if you think about it, if you write about it, you develop your own pathway. And the same should apply to many other people so that they could see opportunities around them, so that they could hear positive urge from different sources, from, uh, gov from the government, from healthcare specialists, from educators because uh, there is this fin financial support so people understand it and then people will de develop this meaning themselves you have also touched upon uh, new generation americans uh, split uh, people in the um, generations uh, X, Z, uh, Y, and now uh, we have digital natives, uh, they belong to generation Z, uh, they, uh, and uh, also there's generation alpha that uh, grew up with uh, uh, smartphones, and that's a new generation. So the role of all generation is enormous here. 
because it uh, can help balance uh, new generations that come to life with different mindset, with different ideas uh, of society, of interaction. Today uh, we mentioned that uh, we use smartphones a lot and it replaces uh, our um, real uh, communication so the brain changes and if uh, children uh, grow up in this environment uh, we don't know what kind of uh, things it will imply so all the people have to demonstrate an example when they can of course we won't be able uh, to use uh, different electronic devices the, the way our grandchildren do. But we have other com competences. And uh, science says that brain doesn't deteriorate with years. It, uh, it, it's getting enriched with empathy and uh, with wisdom. Oh, it's interesting. So what's, what's good about uh, uh, brain aging? You know, due, thanks to neurovisualization, when they have this uh, big tube that uh, works like a magnet, they uh, have uh, studied uh, people at different ages, infants and uh, older people, so they noted that melanization was a very important process. So. Uh, melanization stops uh, when maturity time uh, appears and it's true some nervous cells will die out but a myelinization process uh, is still underway and it goes on throughout life so it's very important uh, um, to understand it because it improves the balance and the relationships between uh, neural cells all the people have uh, wisdom have uh, an insight and not based on education but based on their life experience so it's true our brain changes throughout life so it's related to information accumulation and to experience accumulation but then it gives us the depth of thinking and it changes the central nervous system we have to take the best with us and of course we have to consider uh, different things discovered by scientists maybe bioactive substances uh, diet nutrition this makes a very positive effect on our brain structures so an elderly person has to understand it and to use it to his advantage of course uh, we have to be careful it looks like today uh, many people developed fitness addiction or uh, paranoia. I don't think it can be a threat. You, you think? Well, but uh, it's there. And then people have uh, uh, to go to psychotherapist. So elderly people could demonstrate an example of a very balanced attitude to different recommendations and advice that can be found on the Internet. Another question, what should we learn and how should we learn at an older age? It might, it, this question might sound primitive, but still, that's a great question. There are so many different opportunities. I was looking for different institutions that uh, work in education, so I have seen many different options. You can organize a group and you can do some crafts, uh, some ceramics, uh, or you can run uh, philosophical workshops and maybe cosmogonics or mathematics it depends on the interests 
of elderly people. And there are several options. Sometimes professors that uh, are retired, they organize groups of, their, uh, of people they know and they give lectures, not to be bored. And uh, sometimes younger people give lectures. Of course, they have special training and uh, they are more practical and they explain uh, things to older people so that older people could use technologies uh, and do some other things. But you have to be careful because older people can also develop addictions to Facebook or other gadgets just like children. So all the people can be a very good example because they're more balanced thanks to their experience. And so that's why they can set a good example to children. But you can learn anything. We had a project with 120 participants. They had to defend their thesis. They had to develop their strategies and they were excellent ideas. For example, one was related to uh, photography. What could you do to um, make it uh, better or how to write a family history or how to sustain your psychological health? It's very often that we hear an opinion that all the people can't learn. They are not teachable. Is this true? Well, all the people can be very different. It's not that they uh, make a homogeneous group. And that's why we have to find an individual approach to all people. I saw some Japanese research that showed that some cognitive exercises, not just crosswords uh, or uh, some other simple tasks, but anyway, uh, this cognitive work can reverse dementia. Uh, and robots do it uh, in Japan. And all the people come to special centers for elderly people, and there are robots uh, that talk to them, and so they uh, have to do some tests, and they enjoy it. I think it's very interesting and original. It's also important to understand that uh, elderly people have their own uh, specific uh, features and specific characteristics. For example, I know about one project when there was a training for bank specialists so that they could talk to elderly people appropriately, uh, so that uh, they didn't rush, uh, so that they could speak uh, slowly, so that they could uh, establish a psychological contract a rapport with the uh, older person and this was very important because they had to understand the psychic and the physiological characteristics of an older man and understand what teachers know so and uh, thus both parties uh, the learners and teachers would uh, have success success Thank you. These recommendations have been very ex uh, inspiring. I would like to give the floor to Tatiana Kozlova. She is a doctor of social sciences, professor, expert at High School of Economics. Um, uh, the thing is that I have been dealing with um, studying different social groups. And in particular, I conducted research about older generation. So one of my research was about self-fulfillment of older generation. What does it mean, self-fulfillment self or self-realization, self-actualization? So let's say uh, at the age of 22, the person has uh, his or her own goals, and then they try to achieve those goals. But uh, self-actualization and self-fulfillment could be very interesting to study if we take an older group of people. So we worked with different age groups. 
because in the past uh, people uh, retired at the age of 55 and uh, 60, so then we had four groups older than 60. And we asked the questions, how was your life? Did you succeed in life? This was one of our methodologies. We had an in-depth interview. And as a result of this research, it turned out that we have 75% of people that reached their retirement age 75% considered themselves uh, to reach self uh, um, to reach self actualization so they were happy with their self fulfillment we also did the research about uh, self assessment self evaluation it was also related to self esteem because we know that low self esteem obstructs the person this person can't reach can't achieve uh, their goals and uh, higher self-esteem leads to the fact that uh, these people often fail because they can't cope with the issues that he faces in life and usually the parents used to, to tell such a person at an early age that you you find you'll reach uh, all your goals so it's good when uh, you have an, uh, a proper self-esteem uh, and we studied self-esteem of our respondents so what did what did we see? We saw that seventy percent of all the people had higher self-esteem than the average, and it all depends on self-esteem. A lot of things depend on it, and the. And uh, it was interesting to see what those respondents uh, said when they mentioned that, uh, no, I didn't succeed in life. For example, some people had some diseases. That's why they couldn't uh, um, achieve their goals. On the other hand, there were some people that were doing great in life, but then there was a car crash and they can't do anything they can't achieve self-fulfillment some women mentioned that they had sick children so the, uh, we, the women uh, were worrying about their sick children and uh, they can't say that they uh, are happy they were happy with their life and reached uh, self-fulfillment one man mentioned that he studied with uh, Yevgeny Primakov so uh, look at uh, what uh, Evgeny Primakov achieved and look at me. I tried different jobs and nothing worked out, so I failed. Or another example, a man was married several times and he had children uh, with every woman that he married. And now he uh, uh, lives alone, he has no children, no family, and he says, I failed in life. So there could be different uh, options of unfulfilled life. And we saw that uh, most of our respondents said that uh, they uh, were quite happy. So 75% uh, uh, had uh, good uh, self-fulfillment. Uh, and we checked uh, the ratio between self-esteem and self-fulfillment. So uh, the, it had to be one. But uh, as uh, it was a point, uh, 
8% in our research. We have uh, an association of sociologists headed by Anisimov in St. Petersburg, and he says, our people should live until they are 100 years old. But what does it mean, 100 years old? It's not bad to live until this age, but people have to talk to each other, to socialize. There are psychologists that identified several types of good old age when they feel good and most often people continued working after they uh, uh, got retired. Scientists, for example, uh, scholars at the Academy of Science, so they uh, are involved in research and that's why they continue working. There are some areas like fishing or hunting uh, where young people don't go. So those are the areas uh, uh, where all the people work. Another positive option of old age is when a person got retired and he is busy with himself or herself. They, these people have rest, they educate themselves, and they live for themselves. This is another option of good old age. Another option is when people are devoted to their family, so they concentrate on their family, spend a lot of time with their family. For example, I know um, a lady who uh, got retired at the age of 55, so her daughter had twins, and that's why she retired and began to take care of her grandchildren. And when you are taking care of your children and grandchildren, it means there are many things to do, so that also can be a good example of well-being. Some people like to fo to do uh, to uh, focus on their health. For example, some people wonder what kind of pills should I take. Uh, the questions were asked to Mr. Misnyakov, what should I do in this case or another case when I don't feel well, and they also are interested in herbs. They think that herbs can help. Sometimes this interest in medicine and herbs may not be for, for some bene, may not be beneficial but harmful. And so Mistikov says that when you take too much medicine, it can damage your health. And there are also types of um, not very of unfavorable. Uh, age, 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 aged people. So people criticized everyone. They think everyone's wrong. This aggressive uh, old age, n n n not favorable. It also may happen when a person lived the life and feels like didn't achieve their goals, so didn't fulfill themselves in life. So this person can uh, develop depression even. I had a friend, she uh, worked all her life as an uh, engineer at the factory. At once, at her anniversary, she said, I haven't done anything in my life. I heard this and then I wrote a postcard to her. I wrote to her, Valia, you lived your life in labor. It was a fair life. And that's already a lot. And you will agree with me that it's already a lot. Some, and some things, maybe she failed, maybe she failed with her family, maybe she do, doesn't have children, but she was always fair. And she worked at the same factory all her life. So what would you like to emphasize? 
So now people are talking how to attract uh, seniors to some, how to raise interest to some activity. We have such a resource and the resource is not used, unfortunately. This resource is called uh, local self-government. Uh, when the president addressed the um, federal assembly, he uh, uh, said that we should pay attention to the local self-government. Our uh, institute of so sociology made a, a survey across the country and we asked questions. What do you think? Do we need local self-government? Almost all respondents said, yes, of course we need that. So are you voting for this? Yes. What are they voting for? They are voting for this local self-government. But there is no local self-government per se. So that's what people answered. So we don't have local self -government. What does it mean, local self-government? Uh, in 1980s, at the end of 1980s, uh, there were some committees of self-government in Moscow. First committee was in Brateva, in district in Moscow. It was a very ecologically bad, very polluted district. Now you maybe you know uh, what it became. Much, much, much better. So then there was this committee of this um, self-government in this Brateva. And they started to ask of Moscow municipalities to remove some of the industries that were polluting the district, the environment, and asked that they made some green works, put some greeneries. What else? So there was such a committee in Arbat, in the central street. Then citizens said uh, they were about to be relocated, and they said we would like to stay within the uh, garden ring. Let's go back to the older people. So I'm talking about that today this resource, resource uh, to work with seniors is this local self-government self because seniors want to participate in local self-government at their territories but unfortunately they don't know where to go. And that's clear. So that's where I'm coming to. So that's a resource for seniors. So when they could, they would be particip they would participate locally some tasks through the self-government. I live next to uh, subway station Alexeyevskaya. So seven years ago we had very nice pavilions uh, where they sold groceries, bread, and everything. There were just 10 buildings around, and we've been living there since 1966, and of course we needed all these pavilions. But then some decision came to remove all these pavilions, and instead of these pavilions, just one ice cream cart, and that's it. But no one asked us, and that's what I'm talking about, and they were supposed to ask, and ask who? Seniors, because if we live there since 1966, what is our age? Of course, we are not young people. And of course, for us, these pavilions were necessary. No one asked anything. So they come to this um, uh, some administration, and when we... Uh, they didn't know anything. If, if we had this local self-government, and last year I wrote an article and compared what we had in the 1980s and what we don't have today and published it in a journal under the Academy of Agriculture under the presidency to show that there is no local self-government though there is a law about it it was created by Kozak I know this law but it's not working so people leave and no one's coming to them. And this local self-government is needed for seniors. That's what I'm talking about. Thank you very much. I'd like to support Tatiana 
in this idea. So this involvement to the society, to community, according to stu studies, it's a very important factor of um, prosperity of uh, seniors and any so any activity like volunteering uh, to develop territory or it's the yards their districts it's very important part of the strategy of prosperity among seniors that in a, uh, that is present in all the recommendations both in the west and east and of course so uh, seniors sometimes are irreplaceable because they are very ac uh, of activism at very different levels that's true quite often there there is this information um, uh, so they know everyone in their places and they can really relay all the information they know the neighbors that they can and people usually trust more their elderly neighbors and they're able to organize a lot of things and to do a lot to improve uh, the environment not only for themselves but for everyone around i have great respect and uh, uh, gratefulness to your words because all these studies really show that that's just like that so we started talking about the city and i'd like to give the floor to maria Trojan. we will start to start talking about communities and um, territory so maria is an architect and she makes uh, solutions for elderly people so maria please the floor is just that's my uh, turn to explain why i'm here it's quite a long way to that we organize the lab of the solutions for seniors because before there were no solutions when we just started talking about them 10 15 years ago we were told that um, uh, nursing homes, uh, homes were designed in 1940s, 50s, so what can we offer to seniors? And so during these 10 years we persuaded everyone that before you, the person is in a, in a, in a nursing home, there are so many stages in life. It's uh, this prolongated uh, old age. It's quite active uh, uh, life of type 1, 2, 3 and 4. They should be seen in our cities. Of course, we are talking about studies of big cities, first of all. And here I will show you the presentation because talking about architecture without visual support is almost impossible. So that's why it's important for me that you understand that specialists of all areas worked at this issue. And so aging in architecture it's developing, yes, but architects who are working on it are not so many. And of course, partly because there is no demand for it, but last year became sort of revolutionary. And we can see that uh, during last year there were so many solutions I'm not talking about conferences, they've always been like that, where we met uh, among professionals and discussed all these topics. But we can see uh, how there is this liberalization of, age, uh, old age, of aging. And now I see that I have uh, clients to create uh, city infrastructure. Before it was only for some private residents, for elderly in the countryside. Now that some private clients or sometimes even department department of social security of moscow who create social uh, special spaces for seniors it's about some architectural solutions it's about some uh, upgrading the territory without which we can't do that so there is a city index that are favorable for seniors moscow is not in this index because there were no studies or because it's uh, so low? No, 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 it's, uh, it can't be there. It's not good or bad, just nothing was uh, tested and made. Because there are some criteria 
So when you receive some uh, certificate, there are some criteria and they relate uh, to needs. So to talk about that Moscow will be, or any other big cities, adapted to seniors' needs, and I'll tell you that if it's adapted to seniors' needs, it will be more convenient for moms with, um, uh, the ca uh, with small kids. Uh, so for people who, who with big, uh, heavy um, bags, moms with strollers, people with all kinds of fractures and disabilities. So we can think how important it is, this adaptation. Of course, all architects are quite cocky and we think that um, uh, environment defines mind and without architect uh, active aging is not possible. And here I'd like to cite this uh, study on needs that was made in Singapore. So they made some uh, typing of different of seniors and they discovered eight types of seniors. Here you may see this. So if you make some brainstorm now. So for each strategy we could find some needs of this, for instance, uh, elderly woman who decided to devote her life to her grandchildren. What kind of uh, city infrastructure she needs? Or for instance, if we are talking about a woman interested in her own health, or this person who's interested, who works. So for each of these um, person, so needs are the same, and needs are individualized. So in Singapore, they de detected this, this uh, necessary needs and individualized needs that are typical for seniors. If we speak about principles of designing the environment for seniors, we found four uh, principles that are most important for us, for, for all for groups of successful age groups, old age groups, and not only uh, all the people. I will talk about each of them. So it's uh, to have uh, alternatives, to be accessible, to be multifunctional, and to be integrated. So we should understand how it works uh, for seniors. So here the key becomes the, cho uh, the choice becomes the key. So the, uh, to get this comfortable level of life, good quality of life, and the self-assessment that should be more than average, it depends a lot on if you have choice or you have just this nursing home. So people who argued with me 10 years ago, they told me that they thought that there is no choice. Probably people didn't know there was not enough awareness. Now. We talk about that, of course, we all want to age, if we speak about um, uh, building, so we don't want to move to relocate, we want to stay in the same building as more as possible with our families. But there are other types of people who want to prepare for this age in advance, who are ready to, in 45, 50 years old to relocate to some specialized um, housing. So here you may see two types. So intergenerational social programs, when elderly people live together with students or with single moms with children, so with some socially uh, disadvantaged people, and so helping each other. So we're not talking about this uh, nursing house and kindergarten, there are quite a lot of such posts. But these social programs, they are limitless. There are a lot of them in France. They are alive, they are working. So it's not some imaginary thing. So the lower model, it's uh, when you live with people of the same interests. So you are looking for a person. So you create a community when people share some interests. So, for instance, you like create beautiful gardens and you'd like to live in a place where such gardens will be created. 
so you are looking in Facebook people like you and together you can choose some flat in the same uh, block of flat and little by little creating this community it's not necessary to build for, for this specific reason it may be just some small group in some already existing block of flats so our task today is to understand that there are many many alternatives and so traditional models of nursing homes uh, they are of course stays and stay and they solve some issues but there are alternatives so we have choice we talked a lot about uh, employment so in Russia there are some training courses when all the people learned how to be an NA in the West there are some examples here in Italian example grandpa for an hour so it's communication so they are taught how to talk with small children for children for instance who do not have grandparents different social municipal programs that encourage uh, elderly women to cook in restaurants some national dishes they are very in demand in Italy for instance in Spain so it's a national peculiarity And volunteering in any form, it's, uh, it's a foundation of um, successful old age in many countries. So it's uh, often considered like when you are retired, you can do volunteering. So you have free time, you should spend it for doing something good for your, uh, for people around you. Now about availability, accessibility, affordability. When we it, it talk about accessibility just about these people in wheelchairs people only think about that just to make the proper door and to make it possible for people in wheelchairs it's the right uh, direction but if, among architects it's called decentralization that each district should have a library a grocery store uh, community center so the accessibility of infrastructure in any district uh, whenever you relocate, and of course you don't want to relocate, but so in your district, your district should have all the services that you need. Now you can ask yourself if every district has every services that seniors need. So this topic of decentralization is the key. Of course, seniors are not evenly spread across the city we should get an answer to that. For now, we don't have it. So smart house. There are some city services. So before our head will be replaced by an electronic one, we can at least use some services that will simplify our movements around the house, remind us that we should eat lunch, order some products, So home delivery, city parks provide some services and facilities and it's already obvious in Moscow because uh, there are parks that are arranged for seniors. Now as to public transport, there are many city strategies that are used all over the world that uh, understand uh, that how could uh, f transportation make uh, seniors life easier for example an elderly lady can use uh, a certain bus inside the neighborhood and uh, get home and um, this bus works like a minibus or New York has a special service 
buses first bring children to schools and then they have to wait for four hours and so that's the time that uh, the bus drivers use to deliver um, products and uh, uh, like groceries and uh, food uh, to some elderly lady nearby so there are many different uh, technologies that we are not aware of and it's great to expand your horizon so the environment should suit the seniors needs and uh, they it has to meet their requirements another thing is uh, passengers is uh, pedestrians uh, pathways for example here you can see Chertanovo and Kutuzovsky so there has always been an alternative as to how to get uh, to the metro station so instead of uh, um, going along the motorway you could use a side street uh, so you uh, you could uh, use um, this uh, pathway and for example uh, it's uh, So you will see lots of areas uh, where um, seniors um, can spend their time and uh, feel really comfortable. Now take a look at these areas marked by red. This makes it very difficult for seniors because uh, there are no uh, sh short walks uh, they you have to walk all around those squares and uh, you know Anino Park or Zhukov's Marshall Zhukov's uh, Avenue so when we buy an apartment uh, you know we say oh um, I want uh, to be protected so we ask to build fences now think about it if you live within this fence or you walk around this fence it makes it so difficult uh, for navigation so there are so many challenges so many problems that have to be taken into account and when we study navigation for seniors we understand that uh, we can improve it and uh, one of uh, the alternatives could be multifunctionality so you can have a tube station uh, in the underground uh, then you can have fitness club and polyclinic on the ground floor you will be living on the top floor and also you can uh, have a kindergarten for your grandchildren so if you living in the same uh, building you will get a discount if you take uh, your grandchild uh, uh, in the same uh, kindergarten that is located in your building for example, this is an existing building in Singapore and uh, that's how life uh, is uh, arranged here. So it all depends on your personal motivation and this environment could be created, it's possible. And, uh, there are two important things for example you came to the grocery store Petyorechka, and then you bought everything you needed but you can't walk back so it means that you need a place to sit a little bit to have a rest and the second thing is public toilets there is a study that says half of seniors do not leave their homes because they're afraid that they want uh, to go to the toilet 
It's not that I'm saying we have uh, to start a national uh, program and build toilets uh, everywhere. It can be done differently. For example, uh, if there is uh, a library, a sign will be put so that, that this is a library. And then uh, a few blocks away, you can put a sign uh, uh, pharmacy and it means that uh, elderly people can go in and use the toilet so there are some uh, things that can be done uh, uh, now and we don't have to wait for revolution to create this uh, nice environment it con it uh, consists of tiny details thank you very much anybody who wants to respond any thoughts or ideas it was very interesting to listen to uh, my colleagues and I realized that, uh, you know, like 80% of all this is related to psychology. It's not a burden for society, I mean seniors, but uh, they are re a real reserve and uh, they, are, they belong to electorate because they vote, uh, they are consumers they have special needs and if we understand this at different levels people's life will change to the better sorry i missed something but uh, it's true about Singapore. 10 or 15 years ago, I uh, took part uh, in a TV program and uh, I saw excellent buildings for seniors in Paris. So they were there uh, some time ago and they're still there. And now we hear this uh, uh, stories about uh, buildings in one country or another, whereas uh, Russia doesn't have anything like that, and nobody knows when this will happen. You know, this conference is uh, held under the auspices of our mayor's office. I hope that uh, the mayor could take uh, all the recommendations into account. Yes, of course. This assembly is a great platform and we can raise any issues uh, and uh, discuss how we can improve our life. I would like to say now that uh, if you have questions, you can ask them individually after our session uh, finishes. And I can just say in the conclusion that it's never late to start your life, uh, to start thinking strategically about yourself, think about how you're going to live uh, next year or next five years, what you're going to do. So it's never late to take your life in your own hands. It's never late to make your life better and to become happier. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Yeah, and I would like to thank the speakers too.